What's wrong? Surprise, motherfucker! Hey everyone, today's video will be on the 2022 film Beast, starring Idris Elba. To be clear, the points I will be covering in this video are elements of the movie that stand out to me. So apologies if I miss anything you all thought was important, and also if I repeat anything or say similar things to what other YouTubers have said. I kind of remember when this movie was announced and the trailers came out, I was hesitant and uncertain about this movie. There's been a lot of movies about humans versus animals. Most of them usually go the route of brave humans triumphing over vicious animals to make ourselves look good and better than animals. It's good that wasn't the theme here. Unfortunately, the story I thought that could have really been explored and presented here wasn't as focused on. More on this later. Similar to Cocaine Bear, this movie focused more on the human characters. This isn't to say their story wasn't important or compelling in some aspects. Nate and his daughters are estranged over the loss of Nate's wife and the girl's mother, Amale. I probably butchered her name, so apologies about that and if I do it again. They come to South Africa and meet Nate and his wife's old friend, Martin. Coming to Amale's home country, Nate and the girls, Mayor and Nora, try to reconnect with her in some way. The girls, especially Mayor, feel disconnected from their father as they see Nate as responsible for their mother's death, or rather blame him for giving them false hope when it came to the cancer that ended her life. Which takes a toll on Nate especially, given he's a doctor who didn't recognize the signs until it was too late. Through the hardship and danger they're in when they come unknowingly in the path of a rogue and vengeful lion, they find themselves reconnecting with one another through this terrifying tale. Sometimes when people are in dangerous and terrifying situations, they find themselves bonding with one another through that shared pain. And we see each of the family stories defined in this, especially Mayors and Nates. Admittedly, I know both of them survived to the end because of plot mostly, but given in Mayors case where she ran headfirst into danger, or rather ran into it blindly, no credit to her for having the courage to run into the bush with an angry lion that could be lurking anywhere, though this was obviously both brave and stupid. Oh. Your sister stuck a dart in his ass. Nate's love for his family truly ignited in this story where he tried to protect and save his daughters in a situation that in his position no man would truly be prepared for. In credit to him, he does his best in a situation to save his daughters or he knows he has no chance of succeeding, at least on his own, and you know he's absolutely terrified for good reason. Out of all the characters, Martin was arguably my favorite. This man truly loved wildlife and wanted to do his best to preserve the ecosystem and protect the animals where he lived. He raised the Nandi pride since they were cubs, and you could see that the lions, or at least the brothers, really loved him. The man was an anti-poacher who fought to protect the animals from those who slaughter them without a thought or a care. He also cared deeply about Nate and his family, willing to hold on to an angry lion so Mare and Nora could escape from the jaws of death. And even in his final moments, face to face with the lion that just wanted to kill him, he had no hatred for it. The lion tried to kill Nate, Mare, and Nora, and the lion killed some of his friends. He still didn't hate the animal. He knew why the lion was doing what he was doing. Having lost his pride at the hands of some of the cruelest of humanity, a lion didn't trust any humans. Though obviously a lion who hasn't really interacted with humans like those of the Nandi pride did, don't really have a reason to trust humans. A lion hated humans, and out of grief and vengeance, he sought to avenge his pride by killing every human he could, and Martin's love of animals and his understanding of them didn't make him bear any ill will towards the big cat. He just tried to kill the lion to protect Nate and the girls, and end the lion's pain. He was a standout character. Aside from the emotional impact of the human characters and their journeys throughout this movie, there are some problems with the film in regards to action scenes and moments involving the lion. I want to make something clear here. Lions are one of the most powerful and dominant terrestrial predators alive today. They're called the king and queen of beasts for a reason. And just to be clear, this isn't a rant or lecture on putting lions on a pedestal above all other animals and saying they're better than each of them in every way. This is to make a point on their prowess and what they could do to a human. I love lions, don't get me wrong. I just know there's a difference between having a healthy respect for animals and being a toxic fan. I know, I've been the latter with certain animals way too many times, including four lions. 
the different points when the rogue lion attacks. The wounds he deals to Nate specifically aren't as dire as I would have thought or they should have been. The lion gets his paws and jaws on Nate more than once, and the man is still able to move far better than he should be able to. While a lion might not be the most powerful of the big cats, the beast is immensely strong and far stronger than a human. Though some people don't seem to understand this, Lions have been observed and documented bringing down animals as large as Cape Buffalo on their own. Despite the lion's jaws not being the most powerful of the big cats, at least compared to their size, they're more than strong enough to tear a man apart. And the lion had his paws on Nate more than once, along with his jaws, to which the poor man would have or should have either had his limbs severely broken or even torn off. This is rather odd when compared to the village that the lion wiped out, killing every human and nearly every animal there or left them to eventually die after being wounded. And the lion also wiped out most of the poachers later in the movie, and there herself got attacked as well, with a wound that one would have thought would have been much worse even if the lion had only gotten a brief blow on her. And there were points where Nate should have been easily spotted or detected by the lion in that scene in the dark. A lion's senses are far better than humans, especially at night. So seeing Nate somehow awkwardly hiding from the lion was questionable. To be clear, I'm not saying I wanted to see Nate and Mare torn to pieces. It's just the plot really required them to be far less hurt than they would have been. As specifically with Nate at the end of the movie. The lion was tearing into him and after that Nate was still able to walk. Yes, he had a cane. It's just from the mauling he was getting, he should have been in a body cast. All it would take was just one blow from one of the lion's paws or a bite to the throat and the poor man would have been dead on the spot. I mentioned earlier that a story I wanted to see explored and shown more in depth wasn't as defining here. What I wanted to see during and after this movie was the lion hunting the poachers that killed his pride. I thought this could have been a really powerful xenofiction movie about a vengeful lion that lost his pride that hunts and kills those responsible. He was a king that lost his queens and his only wish is to avenge them and free his kingdom from those that killed them. We saw glimpses of this at the beginning and where the lion attacks the poachers when they start to assault Nate, his girls, and most definitely plan to murder Martin. We saw the bodies the lion left in his path for the most part. We heard the beast roars and the screams of the poachers. It just wasn't as central to the story. We had Martin explaining how while this wasn't really common lion behavior, it was a matter of the lions adapting or rather reacting to the slaughter of their prides and killing those responsible. I wanted to see this lion killing those poachers for the slaughter of his pride. I wanted to see these poachers realizing they weren't the hunters anymore and that they were the ones being hunted. I hate poachers. I really hate them. Those who have a lack or absence of compassion for animals is something that really horrifies and infuriates me. So seeing this lion killing them to avenge his pride was something I thought could have been more present in the movie. We should have gotten more scenes of the lion hunting these guys down. Yes, the lion wouldn't have known the difference between those trying to slaughter his pride in this species and those who had no part in it and those who wanted to protect them. It's just the animal was in pain and enraged. It wanted blood. And while Martin has said lions don't do what he said the rogue was doing, animals can be vengeful sometimes. You know how tigers are called the most vengeful animal in the world? You have the stories of the tiger that hunted down the poacher, that shot it and stole part of its kill, then mauled him when the poacher arrived at his cabin, or the tiger that hunted down the poacher that killed its mate, and the infamous Chimpawat tiger, who was shot and maimed by a hunter or poacher, breaking her teeth and preventing her from hunting her normal prey, and was forced to hunt humans for food, and more than likely, out of vengeance against the species that had cruelly injured her, resulting in 436 being killed by the vengeful tigress. While lions may not be as vengeful as tigers, these social big cats aren't to be crossed or trifled with either. There are stories of poachers finding a gruesome end at the claws and jaws of these big cats out of vengeance for their actions in injuring and killing their species. And it's quite possible, with more trophy hunting and poaching targeting lions, more people whether they're involved in the deaths of these animals or not, might find themselves being sent to death's door by these fierce predators. Beast was a movie that had its good points, questionable moments, and missed opportunities. We see a story of a family trying to survive in a place and situation that's almost all but hopeless, or perhaps really hopeless in brutal reality. 
and grow closer together because of it. While the movie wasn't what I thought it could have been, I'm glad that the film didn't present, or at least didn't try to present an animal in pain and anger as a matter of evil or a thing for humans to conquer. Like with Cocaine Bear, it's not that the humans, or at least the humans that weren't poachers, didn't have value or an emotional impact. It's just the film could have been defined by seeing the animal story more, or perhaps for this movie, the story could have been about the animal's journey from the groundwork of the reason why the beast went rogue. Because the key characters of this film were broken in one way or another. Or a story of specifically two characters, of a man and of a king. Nevertheless, let me know what you all thought of this movie and its plot, characters, and more. I hope you liked this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Once again, I hope you liked this video, and thank you for watching.